All right, guys. Big thanks to Aaron in my home state of Michigan for lending in his Filson watch. And this is kind of a special one. You can see it even on the dial there with that Argonite 715. This was an earlier one when Shinola was actually manufacturing, or not manufacturing, assembling the components in their uh, facility in Detroit. So, you know, using Chinese and or Asian um, parts sourced in, they were able to assemble them. And of course, uh, it uses the Argonaut 715, which is components uh, from a Swiss movement. It's a, um, from the Ronda Corporation. They make uh, some actually really good, affordable, accurate quartz movements. So not, uh, they're, they're really good. I mean, like I'm not mad about them using that at all. So Let's talk about the watch size real quick and then we'll get into some details as far as there's a bunch of little subtle things happening here that actually kind of make this a decent little package. Um, maybe not for its retail price, but certainly uh, secondhand or on closeouts and stuff like that. So case size is 42.5. They call it a 43 mil. I measured it everywhere. I get 42.5 millimeter, not including the crown, obviously. Lug to lug is uh, 50 mil. The thickness is 13.5. You can see you have a domed sapphire crystal that is a single dome, so you can see you got massive distortion there on the dial. 20 mil lug width, so that takes care of the sizing. Uh, we already talked about the movement. Um, let's talk about price real quick. Let's get that out of the way. The retail on this guy, when it came out, when it was available from uh, Shinola or Filson or whoever marketed it, it was uh, $650. Now, I'm sure there's a ton of people that actually paid that, and that's fine. It still is a decent package if you're not um, a straight-up watch snob like most of us are, and we we uh, realize that that's too much for the package. Um, some people would be totally fine separating with $650 to get a, quote, nice watch. So, um, But most of us are never going to pay that. So if you look, um, I found some that were still sold out, but when they were listed on closeout, they were selling these guys for $199. Um, not directly with those, with all the other retailers. Um, but if you look, if you say you're, you're wanting one of these models today, there's a few different colorways. And the prices range, depending on condition and the kit that it is going to come with, the price range anywhere from $180 up to the $300, maybe even just over $300. Now I think those are good prices. Um, if you can get this thing for around $200, I think this is a really good offering because there's a lot going on here. Of course, you have a nice sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating. You have a nice, solid um, quartz movement that is uh, good timekeeping, and you have a really uh, legible dial and uh, syringe-style hands and everything. So um, there is some loom on this, and I'll do a loom shot at the end, but you can see it's really clear. Even with my studio light, you can still see through that crystal easily and you have a really nice polar white dial, nice syringe style handset. The seconds hand um, hits most of the marks. I don't want to say hits them dead on, but it hits most of the marks. I'm, I'm totally fine with it. I know sometimes that can be challenging for the manufacturing side of things. So I really like the contrast of the greenish uh, loomed, which I don't think those are all loomed, guys. We'll, we'll find out at the end, but... Um, and then the three date window cut out there uh, for the date display, obviously the number in the middle, the four is going to be the actual date. So kind of a cool aesthetic. Uh, this is a non-rotating, like almost cog style bezel. Everything's brushed, nice finishing on it. You can see it has a signed screw down crown, but it's more than just signed. It has like a little insert in there. C.C. Filson Company since 1897. And then on the case back here, you have pretty cool decorated, almost coin inlaid into the six screw down, six screw, screw down case back, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so water resistance, 20 Atmos, all stainless steel, sapphire crystal, some other uh, information there about uh, location, built in Detroit by Shinola. So pretty cool aesthetics going on there. The leather on this thing is very much like a fine quality leather jacket. It just has that vibe to it. Um, and you can tell that 
Aaron has worn this plenty on this strap and the strap is holding up very good. I've seen lesser leather straps just shred. Um, one of the things that helps it is there's actual barrels um, inside. So you put the pin through a barrel and the barrel is captured in there. So when you're tugging on it, you have a little more circumference of the barrel that's gonna spread out the uh, tension on the leather of the strap there. So um, you can see these are stretched out pretty good, but if you were to just have a pin in there, this thing would be crazy floppy. They also have really nice hardware up here where you have the rotating uh, piece here. So when you're pushing it through, it's just, but they didn't go oversized either and it's all smooth, rounded out and everything screwed down. So really nice hardware too. So let me give you a wrist shot of this guy. This will be on my 7.25 inch wrist, of course, because I cannot really change the size of my wrist too much these days. So you can see it is large, but it is a very uh, good presence, and it's hard to, and you guys know, I do these wrist shots, but you guys know it's difficult to judge uh, at this distance. So, but it, uh, it wears super comfortable. I would easily wear it on this leather strap. Um, you know, he, Aaron sent it over on a NATO. A NATO's fine too. Um, I would either wear it on this leather strap, or I would throw it on like an Erica's or something like that. One of the elastic straps I think would be awesome. So I'm not going to throw the Erica's on, but I will hold it next to it so you can kind of get a visual. Like if this thing was on there, yeah, I think that would be pretty dope. That would look really good on there. Some other colorways would be fine too, but this is really traditional colorway, so I like that. All right, we'll close you out with a loom shot. Um, before I do, I guess I could show it next to... I don't really have any other field watches laying around. Um, what do I have? Well, I got the, the new Seiko Monster, just for size-wise, you can kind of see size-wise, it, it definitely appears big. It almost has that same effect as like the Citizen Nighthawk, where you have a very expansive, all the way crystal to crystal um, display instead of having like a bezel and everything upsetting it. So it makes it look really big, even though it is a 42.5 millimeter watch. Like this thing is basically this, almost the same size. But, I mean, look how much difference just having that massive dial in there makes it look. So, I'll close you guys out with a loom shot. I'm not expecting amazing loom. But I will tell you this. As soon as you start getting into some low light, like, it, it's still super legible. But let's check out almost no light. Oh, they are all loomed. For some reason, I wasn't thinking they were. So, that's pretty slick. I think most of us can really appreciate uh, loomed Arabics. It's always nice to see that. It's super fun to look at. Um, and it's not dropping out right away. So if this is C1, it's a heavy good formula of C1. I suspect it might be something like that. And then you can see the hands are definitely glowing much brighter. So this is a pretty slick watch, guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next vid. Thanks, Aaron, for lending this in.